philosophical view that has led to the birth of MOOC. Now this philosophical view is called connectivism. Connectivism, ladies and gentlemen, is a learning theory that expresses how internet technologies have created new opportunities for people to learn and share information across the world wide web and among themselves. A key feature of connectivism is that much learning can happen across peer network that takes place online. In connective learning, a teacher will guide students into, into information and answer key questions as needed. Students are also encouraged to seek out information on their own online and express what they find. A connected community around is what is what is what is what is formed through MOOC. Now, the person who invented <coughs> MOOC is a person called George Siemens. Now, George Siemens, according to George um, Siemens, he once quoted that connectivism is the integration of principles explored by chaos, network, and complexity and self-organization theories. Learning is a process that occurs within within these environments of shifting core elements, not entirely under the control of the individual. Now, according to Siemens, he says that learning is no longer an individualistic activity. Knowledge is distributed across networks. In our digital society, the connections and con connectiveness within networks lead to learning. Simons and Dons, who we shall explain later, have experimented with open courses and both stress the importance of more open education. Another founder of MOOC uh, online courses is, is Stephen Downs. Now, Stephen Downs argued that connectivism is a thesis that knowledge is, dis is distributed across a network of connections. And therefore, the, the learning consists of the ability to construct and tra traverse through networks. Knowledge, therefore, is not acquired as through as if it was a thing. It is not very trans transmitted as though it were some type of communication. From, this, from the perspective of the course, what is meant is that the process of taking the course itself is much more important about than the content that is that is other throughout the courses. So what's for so for example, if you're trying to learn about chemistry, what the, what Stephen Thoughts is emphasizing is not the content of the course of chemistry, but he wants us to engage in, in, in an activity where people who are interested in chemistry are trying to act or trying to study and become a chemistry myself by interacting with other people who are interested in the similar field. Now the origin of massive online courses go all the way back to 2008 when Canadian scholars George Siemens and Stephen Downs introduced an online course named Connectivism and Connective Knowledge, also known as CCK, which became the first MOOC online course. Canadian scholar Dave Cormier invented the acronym MOOC. His definition of MOOC is a free course and which is open to everyone, irrespective of and these courses are delivered online through massive, uh, through massive ways and through a large crowd of people. In, in, MOOC, in MOOC online courses, it's divided into two categories. First of all, XMOOC and later CMOOC. Now, XMOOC, invented by, which, is, which was first uh, coined, which was first mentioned by Stephen Downs, is, uh, coined this term. A more traditional, XMOOC is a more traditional organized online course utilizing teaching methods such as pre recorded lectures, texts and quizzes, and usually sponsored by universities or commercial entities and which may offer certificates and or course credits. The origin of X must go back to 2011 when Peter Norvig and from the, from the University of Stanford offered students the chance to enroll in their artificial intelligence courses. Now, the key characteristic of XMOOC is that they eliminate teacher-student interactions and involve limited student-student -student interactions. An example of XMOOC would be Coursera and UDSAT and many other XMOOCs such as Khan Academy, which can be provided online. Another type of X, another, another type of MOOC is called CMOOC. Now, the CMOOC stands for Connectivist, which represents the nature of CMOOCs. Other than being developed by individual instructors, CMOOCs involve groups of people learning together. CMOOCs often include blogs, learning communities, and social media platforms that contain content, content and promote interaction. So in this environment, participants are, are all considered teachers and learners rather than each individual, either a student or a teacher. Now, a key difference here between a CMOOC and an XMOOC would be that XMOOCs are funded by larger institutions such as universities or corporations, while CMOOCs are usually funded by individual people who are interested in, in promoting certain ideas or studying certain fields of subject with a group of interest, middle group of people who share the same interests. Crazy is also an example of a CMOOC where a group of people who are interested in joining together to promote certain project. And also, uh, they're usually conducted through um, through internet mechanisms such as Skype or, or, or other online face-to-face -face, uh, mechanisms. Examples of MOOC platforms can be limited to Edit, Coursera, Udacity, FutureLearn, and Canvas. Now, uh, the professors previously explained about, about Udacity, Coursera is a for-profit platform for online courses developed by Stanford University uh, members. And also, these list of MOOC platforms contribute in helping people know about uh, education about online courses. Now, the impact of MOOC education is diverse. 
First of all, it, it provides fair grounds for education. Uh, also, second of all, it's very easy of access to education itself. So MOOC can be accessed anywhere as long as there's access to Wi-Fi. And people who come from poor backgrounds can also be accessed to MOOC without paying a uh, fee. Third of all, it's a library for MOOCs, combining macro, micro courses and small courses, utilizing animations, videos, and other methods, which is more attractive to young students. First of all, MOOCs overcome traditional one by one minute online teaching with videos. By responding immediately to students in the online communities, teachers can also improve their knowledge and skills when they have to find solutions for real challenges quickly. Now, MOOCs certainly have a lot of benefits, and there are many misconceptions and misunderstandings that people sometimes complain that MOOCs eliminate face to face interaction, and MOOCs also prevent um, creative thoughts, and also this idea of, of, of listening, of, of, of learning through online courses goes against the traditional measure. But what is most important about MOOCs is that they have significantly challenged the traditional education system and also the philosophy of what we can call traditional education. The impact of MOOC on education can be called, is, is called the flipping classroom. Now, in the flipping classroom, students finish watching the online courses at home and while discussing, debating, and interacting with teachers and classmates, classmates in the actual classrooms. Flipping classroom can also greatly improve students' productivity and learning performance. This uh, type of flipping classroom is often addressed to an online to offline model and has taken full advantage of both online learning and face to face interaction to improve knowledge and spreading exploration. So, therefore, flipping classrooms still do give a certain amount of benefits and they are giving a lot of benefits in this current status quo. And also, uh, another big benefit of MOOC on education is that usually only a small fraction of MOOC students will complete the course in the end. So about 5 to 6% of students actually receive the course credits, which means that MOOC courses are also as competitive as traditional courses, and they do not, or they are not lacking in feasibility or competitiveness. Now, another impact of MOOC on education is that MOOC breaks time and space, which radically changes the way people acquire knowledge. University walls come down and national borders become unimportant. What this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that the, that MOOC provides a book, that MOOC online courses provide great opportunity for students from different cultures to experience a different kind of education. For example, if we're talking about chi uh, of a traditional Chinese or any other type of Asian crime and study, met study method, it can be replaced with a lot of different MOOC made by US University. By looking at MOOC and by looking at online courses from different countries and by learning how people in different countries study and learning from and learn different methods, people can change their ways of study and this could be def this could be effective uh, interaction of, of of beyond boundaries. An example of this, of, of an effective uh, culture exchange resulted from MOOC would be the Shanghai uh, Jiangdu University's uh, CMOOC initiative. Now, also known as SJTU, this was the first university in mainland China to study an agreement with Coursera. Of course, called traditional Chinese medicine and, and meditation culture has attracted about 20,000 students from more than 30 countries by the end of May this year. For which course, there is a full-time teacher responding to students' questions in the online community, and students who can understand, understand English can also register by simply translating the English subtitles to their own language. So clearly, you can see that this MOOC uh, provided, uh, sponsored by SJTU, is going across beyond culture uh, boundaries and is trying to expand other cultures by interacting with one another. The effects of MOOC on this particular example was that across school en enrollment and credit transfer mechanism has been established with the University Alliance. So what this means is that uh, through this MOOC, many other Chinese universities were able to form alliances with universities and they were able to engage in, a, in an activity where they will share their MOOC uh, courses and where, where students can learn from each other by engaging through frequent classrooms and, and, um, and for other school students to learn and register for the courses that are also being, being teached at this particular university. Now the future of MOOC, ladies and gentlemen, what I believe, is that in this current status quo, we see that the, users, that the implementation of, of internet is being expanded to commerce, trade, and many other aspects of the 21st century. And I also believe that when MOOC, the internet courses can also be applied to education, we can diversify type of MOOCs that are in the status can, can also fortify the strengths and advantages that MOOCs provide to the people of the 21st century. These are my citations, and thank you for listening.